Today we're going to talk about um, assembling, running, and cleaning your 704. The rear seal goes together by placing the larger end over your thumb. We're going to put this thin piece of rubber into the groove. The easiest way I've found to do it is to get it back with your index fingers, push, and walk it around. This has a unique dasher for us, um, but it's, again, it's very simple because we designed it to be pretty much foolproof. We have scraper blades that have a small hole, a large slot, and a recess so they can only be put on one way, actually. So the recess is going to go on top of the pin. The ob round, the slot, is going to go in the large hole. Small hole goes in, and then it rides like that. Same thing for this one. We have the hole, which goes to the hole. We have the recess in the back, which has to go on top of the pin. It goes on like that. We have a rear seal that's been assembled. I'm going to put three pencil eraser size blobs back here. Put the rear seal on. Now we're ready to go into the barrel. Okay, I'm going to put this dasher assembly into the barrel and we're going to, once it's in, align the end of the drive shaft to fit its female part inside. The way to load this is with one, the back blade you want down. Lay it in like that. You can tilt this just a little bit and then the front one slides in. If you try to do it about any other way, you're going to fight it. Once I'm all the way back, I'm going to push and spin until it engages, like it just did there. And then I'm going to put the front blade down. It's going to aid me in assembling uh, the front plate onto it. Okay, I'm going to take the little plunger here, slide the O-rings into the grooves, they easily stretch over. Next I'm going to take the shaft, screw it onto the plunger, we get the spring, put it onto the shaft, Get a little bit of lubricant on both of these O-rings, work it around into the O-rings. Going to grab the spigot housing, insert the spring and shaft in first, get it started, turn over, and guide the shaft through the hole. We have the, the knob, it looks different than the other ones. Screw it all the way in and get it as tight as you can. Next goes the large o fat o-ring that goes on over this for the seal. Then I'm going to grab the front plate, paying attention to where the recess is for its bushing that goes onto the dasher, turn it to the opposite side and put the spigot on by screwing it until you find the thread where, or the place where it stops, turn it just to where you have it straight down so it dispenses straight down. Next goes on the front plate O-ring that gets no lubricant. It's very important that this does not get lubricant. If it does, it will squirt out of the way and leak. Next I'm going to get the bushing for the dasher, insert it into its hole, a little bit of lubricant on the top and just a little bit in the side. We don't want any on the opposite side. Um, it's just going to make it harder for you to get out later. Next I'm going to get my knobs close by. I'm going to hold on to this O-ring while I'm getting it up close because it, it tends to jump out of the way. I'm going to pull this out just a little bit. Find the dasher first. Put the front plate on to where I can just barely start one knob. I'm going to go across 
and get the opposite one because I need to push in a little bit as I do it. I'm going to get these two started. Not too much. Get the other two knobs. Then I'm going to alternate back and forth, working it on to where we've removed the gap between the O-ring on the back of this front plate and the barrel. For those of you that still have our older style front plate, I'm going to show how it goes together. Um, this is the newer style. It's um, much less expensive to replace, uh, much more cost friendly. Uh, but what we have here is this big, thick front plate. We have a spigot plunger that takes two O-rings. They just slip on. One in the front, one in the back. A little bit of lubricant on both. You'll notice on this plunger, there is a recessed area out and that you can only enter the handle in from the back side. So we're going to push this down until it'll slide right past the first one. When the second one's hit, we're going to give it a twist as we go in. We're going to place the recess for the handle towards us. On the back side will be the recess to aid it in breaking the ice that tends to build up right through here. We have an O-ring. Okay, we turn it over, insert the handle into the hole. We take the fast pin, go through the handle. This one's ready to assemble. It goes on the same way as the other one you'll just have knob extensions on the knob to make it longer to go through this thicker front plate. Next, I'm going to take the restrictor tube and its O-ring, slip it on, a little bit of lubricant. Work it into its hole. Drop this in the mix pan to be sanitized, but not inserted into the inlet tube yet. This drip tray has been washed and allowed to air dry. It just snaps into place. These two notches go to the back and go around the screws that hold it in place. It goes behind the whole thing, slides down, and it's secure. Ready to sanitize. Okay, I have four gallons of lukewarm water that I have measured one ounce of liquid sanitizer into it and stirred it up. I'm going to dump that four gallons into the hopper. Okay, um, please let it take the time that it's needed to completely fill the barrel, otherwise you'll have a sudsy mess to get rid of. But it, it took a while. We have um, sanitizer in the, the whole barrel. I'm going to take this cup, also put it down in the sanitizer, and get it good and clean. I'm going to take my, one of my brushes that's supplied with the machine. I'm going to go around the edge, all the way around, and I'm going to go into the inlet hole and down into the barrel with the machine off. This is really important. The recirc tube is still up in the hopper waiting. It's just being sanitized right now. I'm going to flip this down into the clean-out position. Let it run for a minute. 
that sort of noise that happens um, in our slush machines is fairly normal. We have to set the blades fairly loose to be sensitive enough to work. As soon as uh, you get good slushy product in there, it goes away. So now I can shut it off and dispense out what's in the barrel, all the sanitizer. Grab the resort tube, get it on top. Okay, I have at least four and a half gallons of mix is what it's going to take to fill this machine up to, to even be able to turn it on. I have my cup that was previously sanitized. I'm going to get a cup full. I'm going to go around. I'm going to, I have a container down here that I'm going to leave there as I'm getting the last bit of sanitizer out plus the mix that I'm running around the walls, just a little bit on the walls. The rest I'm going to go to the front and dump it. As soon as um, it comes out looking like the mix that's put in, I'm going to shut this off. Fill the machine with the rest of the mix. And again, it's going to take a while, but it needs to fill up completely, get rid of all the air. You need to fill it to a point where the mix out probe is covered. Uh, once that happens and it, it is filled, it, it's quit through bubbling in, we'll put the research tube into its hole turn the machine to auto. Okay, just to summarize, we've assembled the dasher, lubed it, put it in place, assembled and lubed the front plate, put it in place. We have uh, sanitized the machine. We have chased it out with mix. We let the mix pan fill until the mix out probe is satisfied. We put the research tube in place. All that's left to do is turn the machine on to auto, put the lid on, there's the compressor starting up. Okay, it's the end of the shift, we're going to clean out the machine. Uh, what I have done so far is emptied all the product that I could get out of the machine into clean sanitized buckets covered them, put them back into the walk-in for future use if you um, decide to. If not, you can throw it. Um, then I got a couple of, uh, twice, I got two gallons of lukewarm water with a little bit of dish, uh, mild dishwashing detergent in it. Um, rinsed it out with, the, with that twice. Um, I'm about to take the machine apart and clean it. So to start all that off with, I pulled out the, the research tube and with that you just take a dry towel uh, be sure you have extra room down here pinch you need the extra room so when you push up there's somewhere for it to go it puckers up I have a little container under here to um, catch what spills I'm going to take the front plate knobs off I'm going to get them all loosened Going to hold on to it and take the knobs off. I have the front plate off. I'm going to unscrew the spigot housing. Sometimes they're hard to start, but after that, it comes off pretty easy. I'm going to take off the knob. Okay, I'm going to push out the spigot plunger, put the spring in the bucket, unscrew the little plunger, I'm 
I'm going to remove the excess lubricant. It makes it easier to get it off. Go to a drier place on the rag. Again, extra room on the, the rag to be able to pinch, push, and get it off. I need to get this off. The easiest way to do that is to take one of our O-ring removal tools. Don't go in it straight. You'll just snap this little piece off. Go in it at an angle. Get behind it till you can roll it out and away. Roll it off. This also goes into the bucket of parts to be cleaned along with the knobs. We need to get this O-ring off, smack it on your hand, front bushing comes out, dasher comes out, hold on to the blades, They're, they will fall off easily, put them in your bucket, get the rear seal off. Be careful with this little propeller in the front. It's easy to bend and it won't work as efficiently if you do. Rear seal comes apart simply by grabbing onto the rubber with a dry rag where you can get some traction on it. Pull it apart. It's really important to get this groove cleaned out. All these parts go back into the sink. Be careful not to lose the little O-rings. Bring some soap and mild detergent, uh, mild detergent back in some warm water. Wash out the machine, the top, the front. Wipe down the machine with a rag. Never use Scotch-Brite. Um, let your parts after you wash air dry and you're ready to go the next day. Number 188503 covers several versions that we have made in the past, including all of the O rings, O ring removal tool, brush, rear seal, and scraper blades. If you need the spigot body for your 704, it is part number 110381. For the model 704, your spigot plunger is part number.